Hello everybody, um, I was going to work on a project here about finding work uh, potentially any place on the planet um, right from home. Um, so this is going to be kind of an extensive topic um, and we're going to look at hopefully everything. Um, but a couple quick things uh, that we're going to do is we're going to primarily focus on some of the best maps that we can use. Um, and then also, uh, sorry, I'm going to shrink this down a little bit here, um, but we're going to basically look at uh, the earth here, we're going to try to look at transportation, we're going to look at food, and of course population, um, and then also some various ways of trying to understand where the wealth is, um, because if you're working, you're looking to try to make some money, but um, what the alternatives are, um, and then also on the food side, uh, we're going to try to do that as well, um, but basically, um, you know, I'm currently looking for some work, um, and um, I hope uh, this will help you a lot. I will try to look at the chat periodically to see uh, if there is any questions um, and I'll uh, look at that and try to see what we can do to try to make it uh, fit into what we're talking about. So over the years I've been collecting different types of maps. Um, I'm going to try to load up these to show you uh, what they are um, and I have these bookmarks set but basically the first one that I want to start with was a kind of like a pressure map. Um, just to see uh, what's going on. Um, now, you know, I'm currently having some problems uh, trying to find some work um, just from home. Uh, I can't really go out too much. I have been just struggling uh, with some things. Uh, so I'm trying to find some work uh, basically remotely. Um, but we're going to look at this um, to start with um, just because it kind of shows some really cool uh, features that you might not be aware of. This is windy here um, and you can kind of see um, I'm loading up the wind map for the entire planet here. It's going to take a little bit of a moment uh, because I'm trying to uh, load so much stuff here. But uh, what I wanted to do is I added the pressure map here. So like no matter where you are in the world, um, there's different air pressure connections uh, between the regions so you can kind of see uh, where you are so even in the United States so here like in India for example southern tip of India uh, or even uh, parts of Asia you can see that this pressure line goes all the way over to here and then comes up through here and then kind of shifts into these and then heads down back to Florida so you can see that the, that Florida probably has some of the same pressure areas as India for example southern India and then there's some other areas here that are essentially the same as well but there's slight shifting there so these 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 maps between these lines here you can kind of say that this is all India and interestingly that actually goes up to Chicago um, and that's where I'm from so you can see uh, there's actually some pressure uh, relationships all the way across the entire Pacific Ocean um, that are pretty interesting to kind of think about. So uh, like you wake up in the morning and you say, hey, and these change pretty massively. Um, I mean, these are hurricanes here. You can see these circular areas um, and kind of the wind uh, coming off of some of those hurricanes. But you wake up in the morning and you say, hey, who do you want to work with? Um, well, the air pressure map might be pretty helpful. Now, I'm actually here in Idaho. Uh, you can see it's kind of up in this region here. Um, and actually, we probably head out over here. Um, into this whole circular region and maybe even Japan. So basically, um, Korea and Japan uh, are maybe more related uh, where I am at. So basically, that is one way to look at this. Now, I'm going to be pausing this from time to time because I'm going to record it uh, and I'm trying to like publish it later. Um, so hopefully, it'll be helpful uh, to everybody here. So I'm going ahead and saving a lot of these bookmarks uh, and basically adding uh, this up here. So you're going to see this is a FAO map, Food and Agricultural Organization. This is with the United Nations. It's one I've been working on for uh, almost a full year now. So there's a lot of data here um, that really is aggregated. It takes a long time to load, unfortunately, because I'm also streaming this at the same time. So I might pause it just to make it a little faster here. Um, but here it actually loaded up pretty good. So 
Um, what I did is I kind of saved a lot of the data into one uh, map so you can kind of turn off some of these. But one other thing you might even think about is hydrological basins. There's major hydrological basins and then there's hydrological basins. So you can see these are the major ones. Uh, and you can actually find that a lot of the work uh, that you're looking for around the world may actually be within a certain region. Um, so you can see here, uh, one thing that I was really surprised is that uh, in Chicago and the Great Lakes, it's actually more part of Canada. Um, so a lot of the work here may actually be drained all the way out into Canada. So that was really surprising uh, for me personally to see uh, some of that. Um, and then you can see some of the farming region heading all the way up here. So actually you can do two ways, kind of see how the food kind of comes in all into Chicago area, kind of all the way from here back and it kind of just, um, so basically Chicago becomes very important uh, for work in general in the United States and you can look at this around the world uh, we'll just do this really quick to see in Latin America same kind of thing it's actually in Sao Paulo and also Rio de Janeiro oh, excuse me <laughs> this is bonus areas down here um, but uh, there's just so much different things going on here so sorry if this is a little bit boring um, but I'm trying to get uh, some cool stuff going on here. So, but basically in e West Africa and East Africa, you can kind of see Kampala being kind of the center for most of that. And then Nigeria being the center right in here for food as well. So as you're thinking about this uh, Ethiopia, and then actually one thing really surprising is that there's farming is so serious right here in North Africa and then also Europe. Now Europe is a little bit more complicated picture. It's really amazing how important Ukraine is. The dark blue means that's heavy farming. Uh, red areas are not as serious farming, but there's still some significant farming. Part of that is because the desert is out there. Let me just show you um, the uh, Google Earth map if that will load up here. It looks like it crashed on me at one point. Um, I'm using a Indian version of Linux here, which is kind of funny, but anyway, I'll pause this while it loads. So right here, I'm getting the marine traffic map, um, and I'm kind of importing this all over to the Google Chrome uh, or Chromium um, web browser. Oops, that's not going to work. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, there's this marine traffic map here, and I'll load this up here and just delete that really quick. But so um, it turns out that with work, a lot of this stuff is about shipping. So I really wanted to look at some of that. Um, globally with everyone here. Um, I have this kind of linked right now to, uh, looks like kind of a big map here, but let's see if I can get this to do the satellite region. I'm sorry about this. It's a little bit uh, difficult to get this all going correctly. So I just want to say thanks for all the support, especially with what's been going on recently. There's been a lot of struggles for just about everyone on the planet. So uh, it is really difficult uh, finding a good job. Uh, and I just wanted to emphasize um, that what we're trying to accomplish here tonight is actually quite a big, complex project. Oops, sorry. So here it is. You can do satellite map, and that gives you a little bit better version of the map. And I like that better. So. I think it changes it. it, doesn't really change it up here unless you, for some reason the link isn't that great. Um, but I really love this map a lot. Um, I'm just looking at the United States really quick, primarily because that's where I live. Um, but you can see there's just a lot of details in here. Um, now I live out here in Seattle area. I'm originally from Chicago. Um, I'll just zoom in and you can kind of see what's going on in Chicago because a lot of the work essentially is around the Chicago area. Uh, for the entire United States, at least according to some of these map areas. So, but on the port area, it's not quite the case, but you can see here, even this is showing quite a lot of activity and especially through here, um, there's some activity too. And you can see there's just a, quite a number of barges and ships on the Mississippi River, uh, but actually gets super cool and interesting out in Puget Sound. You can see the number of boats here on this map as it loads. Sorry, it's taking a little time to load here. But, and then the seaports are really cool. So you, if you're looking for some work uh, near the water, you may want to try to contact some of these people near the seaports. And I've been actually trying to do that down in Tacoma and also Seattle, and then up here in Bellingham, Everett, 
um, and even further north, uh, which is actually Bellingham. But, uh, and then this gets into Canada here. This is Bellingham, this is still United States, but then this is the Canadian border right there. Uh, and then you can see Vancouver Island and some other areas. But pretty cool map to look at um, if you're interested in seeing about ocean port work. So if you're not familiar with Google Earth, I totally recommend it. It's really fun to check it out. I've been using it all the time. I use it almost every other day um, just to check out things. But this is the earthquake map, so it's kind of moving really slowly. And also I got recording going on and just so much stuff going on on my computer right now. So it's a little bit slow, unfortunately. So I had to turn off Windy really quick. I don't know if you noticed that. There was just a huge amount of data on that web browser. So just because of the uh, particle swarm that it was showing how the wind moves really fast and stuff. So anyway, I'm really sorry if this isn't super interesting for some people, but, uh, but basically the earthquake maps on this really are interesting to see. So you can kind of see um, some details about this and it's fun to kind of zoom in and think about the earth spiritually because sometimes you can get some work but there's a lot of earthquakes and so like for example here you might consider looking for work out here in California because there's so much earthquakes going on that means there's a lot of spiritual connections with the earth as well as out here in these areas and other things so it's just kind of interesting to think about uh, and then heading down into South America, Colombia, and some other regions. And because this is kind of like an international YouTube broadcast with anyone wanting to see it, I'm gonna try to zoom out really far uh, and kind of show what's going on all around the earth. So you can see here in South America, there's kind of a lot of earthquakes along the coast. So Chile actually is pretty pretty interesting place. You can see here, um, basically you got uh, a lot of earthquakes in this region and then heading down into Chile uh, there so and then we'll switch over to Africa Africa is really surprising there's not a whole lot of earthquakes but there is a lot of lightning and you can see a lot of that movement um, if you consider earth movement very important is actually around oh it's in the clouds so that's interesting so let me turn that off just for a second sorry about that um, that could be really fun to see, but that's just for today. So, uh, but uh, basically you got Ethiopia being super important. And then this actually all heads off into India and even Pakistan. So you can see this fault line here heads out here. And there's actually a huge amount of earthquakes right up in this region. Uh, this is like Afghanistan, Pakistan, and then the Himalaya mountains having all these earthquakes regions going here. And then this is kind of Greece and uh, Turkey uh, as an opportunity region as well. Uh, and then it gets just even more unbelievable as you get into Southeast Asia. And you can see there's just this huge amount of force of earthquakes. And it's such a beautiful map. I wish I could show you how cool it is. I'm trying to rotate this a little bit so you can see the top of this map. So basically what's happening here is there's a huge number of earthquakes. This all heads into the tip of Japan. Um, and around so you can kind of see uh, what potentially would happen here um, and all this would be connection so you know this is definitely gonna affect your job earthquakes so anytime you're doing business here definitely um, it's a major factor of what's going on so I'm gonna try to end the live stream in a moment here um, but you can see uh, as I pan out here to Fiji that there's just a huge amount of earthquakes here out from New Zealand kind of kicking all this up here um, which is a huge this is perhaps the most important region on the earth for earthquakes so um, it's just a huge amount of pressure on the land there so something to think about um, at least in recent history this is the last I think almost 100 years of earthquake data so going back into the transportation discussion, you can start to see uh, what's really important uh, in terms of transportation uh, on the airline map. And this will change throughout the day. It's pretty cool just to see, like uh, you can see like current airplanes. So like for example, this guy right here, I'll show its path. Uh, hopefully it didn't really work yet. Sorry, there's a lot of data going on right now. So it's kind of still loading. It's even loading the airports. So this went from Bermuda to London. 
So there is a lot of money in trying to figure out basically where these different flights are going. So you can see there probably London is a busy place to check out. Um, and unfortunately this is taking a long time to look, but these are the major airports. So you can kind of look for business around some of these major airports um, can be very helpful as well. Now I'm gonna zoom in in the United States and then close the map because it's just really a lot of data going on here. Uh, and I don't know why it's so slow. I think part of it is because I got uh, memory problems here uh, with what's going on. And, uh, but I'll show you this United States map and then now you can start to see all the airports in the United States um, as well as the aircraft. So this kind of shows you some major stuff around Colorado. It's still loading even more aircraft. And then you see a lot of traffic here kind of heading down to Florida. Kind of a whole almost a highway of airplanes uh, going right over Texas, Houston, uh, all, all the way down to Miami. So and then there's just this huge amount of aircrafts on the East Coast and then as well as West Coast here. So uh, one of the problems if you're not familiar with the United States is basically traveling from one coast to the other, um, you know, the capital. Washington DC has a lot of uh, business and work and that's over here uh, out in Washington DC. So, and then if you work in San Francisco, you know, there's basically this out here. So it's quite a different uh, region. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful. I'm gonna close out some of these maps uh, and even save them so I can have them in the future. Uh, I'll try to save all these and post them uh, so that you can have the links in the video later on. Okay, so one other thing that we really haven't talked about is population uh, as well as roads and airports. So this has airports on it, seaports, large airports, railways, roads, major hydrological basins, and medium-sized airports. I'm going to take the medium size off so you can see just the larger ones, but essentially it makes a huge difference. Medium-sized airports aren't always international, so these are mostly just international airports. And then I'm actually going to take off seaports, so you can see the seaports are right there. Those are major seaports, and then large airports. Railways is pretty cool, so you can take off the railways. Now you just have hydrological basins and roads. So we're going to zoom in in the United States, and you can see this is this open street map road thing. So a lot of that depends on the opacity. So you can start to see these are the major highways. So now you start to see basically where the major highways are on for the entire United States. Um, so you can start to see where you might work between different both airports um, now these are the major airports here right so if you have high speed shipping that you need to do for your business you can work on that and then you also have the uh, airports as well here so you can see we're definitely biased towards the east coast on roadways now i'm going to zoom into chicago because that's where i'm from originally um, and i know this area a little bit better so there's going to be even more roads these are kind of the medium-sized roads you can see that they're kind of turning into orange now. There is also very important to do railways because Chicago actually really depends on these railways. So now you can start to see some of these railroads. Now we have a railroad map with the um, regular road map, but it gets a little bit confusing. Sorry, this is kind of loading slowly, um, but we're gonna get it into here so you can see all the details. Now, I don't know if you just noticed this, but these are the metro lines. So it actually shows the metro lines on here uh, as we zoom in. So it doesn't really show that on the main map because it's hard to see the details unless you actually zoom in. So now we're looking at downtown Chicago um, and some of the major road systems are just out of these yellow roads now. Uh, and then you see Rosemonds and some other areas. Now the population map is actually also on this. So if you see, I put the hydrological basins here green so i'm going to turn off the cropland map there's actually some crops in some of these areas so i'm turning off the crop map major cities major rivers so there's also river maps here i don't know you can't really see it um, because the opacity of this one is so high so this kind of shows you the population here so you can kind of see what that population is um, but i will add all this um here so you can see um, the details and I'll kind of keep it as a link uh, right now let's do that right now so this is the like it's gonna generate the link and I'll post that right here so you can see this will be mainly for Chicago unfortunately um, so I'm gonna zoom out uh, and uh, 
post this right here. So that should be the one link there in the chat. Anyway, I hope you really enjoyed this discussion about how the earth works in terms of work uh, and using mapping to try to help you out a little bit. Um, and again, I would mention that uh, some of the earlier discussions that we had here, particularly with uh, the windy map was very helpful, right? Because we can kind of see from the day to day uh, who we might be working with um, based on the weather patterns, which is pretty uh, interesting concept to try to think about. And the other really major map to look at is this one, right? The hydrological basins map and the farming map that we looked at. So you can kind of see whether you're in India or China or Africa or Europe and kind of see where the rivers are and kind of work on this map as a very helpful way to study the work work environment. I'm probably going to do a follow-up topic on this at some point later down the way. Um, I hope you really enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions. I'd be glad to talk with you more. Thank